programming is brought to you by Local Video Marketing. In association with CoachChick.com Here we have pre-game warm-up by Team Ukraine. It was drilled once again zero. And this drill goes very, very e easily. Player starts backwards and he receives a pass. He goes with with a puck. He comes the second player pass. He skates on the net and shot also from the other side. We take a look at once one more time or two two more times. You see here it was very very quickly. It works very, very easily, and I love the drill, and I hope you are going to enjoy it also. I think it's very, very interesting. That's all. The next drill that I love was done by Team Ukraine. It's uh, drill two against one. I haven't seen something like this before. I find it very, very in interesting. It starts that two players are going to cross fr from the side. He comes here, and we have two against one. After that, after that, the player here goes behind the net. This player goes this way, and they receive a pass from from one player, and they go two against one one more time. Now we show it from the other side, it's actually the same, cross, make a pressure on the net, two against one, two players th this way pass, crossing on the blue lines and two against one again, I love it. Team Ukraine had a very interesting passing drill warm up, they shoot at the goalies in the middle, here down the zone they had, they had of course uh, defenders here up and here were the forwards they have been passing here they have been also passing here of course they have been onto the red, red line i show it just to have much more plays i think it's very very in interesting it's very interesting for the young players because we keep the young players under control and they actually do that what we expect like coaches that they are going to do very good Great. Team Poland had similar passing drill, pre-game warm-up drill, like uh, Team Ukraine, but here in the zone where the goalie was sh shooting, there were defenders, here up were forwards, it was pass on the board, pass back, and skating back. Here behind the blue line has been forwards, they have been skating, passing, just some puck feeling, very interesting. Team Poland had very interesting drill, once again zero. It's interesting because they used two shooters at the same time, also two goalies. On the command, this player started backwards, this player also pass, pass back, also here pass, pass back. Now they go forward, this player goes here, this player goes here. They received a pass from this group and from this group. 
this player on this side shoot on the goalie outside of the net and this player shoots on the goalie inside of the net. It's very untraditional drill, why not? I think it's very interesting for the junior teams and I think it's very quickly one. Thunderband workout, I've got it coming at you right now. We're going to actually create a circuit, a five exercise circuit that's going to hit your entire body and all we're going to use is a 73 inch Thunderband. Now why do I want to use a Thunderband instead of just a regular 41 inch band? It's very simple. The longer band is going to give me more resistance variability. So therefore I can stretch the band out to optimally load the exercise and provide the correct starting resistance that I need for that exercise. Perfect example, if we were gonna do a one-arm chest press, I'm probably gonna start right about here. The band is loaded and I can go ahead and do the one-arm chest press. However, if I'm gonna do a one-arm row, I need more resistance because I'm stronger rowing, so I'm gonna step back further so that I can go ahead and do my one-arm row. That's what I mean by going ahead and optimally loading your band so you can go ahead and optimally load the exercise you're choosing. And with a 73 inch Thunderband, you've got almost four yards, four yards of training distance to work with. That's a lot of distance. Now granted, that can be a disadvantage if you don't have that much space in your band gym, but most people have that and are able to do it. Another key component to using a 73 inch Thunderband that I want to remind you of is whatever exercise you choose, please make sure that you have resistance and tension on the system at all times. Don't use such a huge Thunderband that you have to go way back here to go ahead and do your chest press or your exercise. Because if you do, and this is loose back here, you're losing the total effect of training with bands. So make sure that you keep, are able to keep the tension on Choose the correct thunder band that you need. By the way, if you don't have a thunder band, can you make your own? Absolutely you can. Get a link strap, put two 41 inch bands together, and you now have essentially a 82 inch long system. So it's a little bit longer than a thunder band, but it's the same effect. You still have a great deal of resistance variability to go ahead and work with. So there's how you can go ahead and make your own thunder band. All right, now let's go ahead. Let's take you through your Thunder Band workout circuit. First exercise is gonna go ahead and be a horizontal chest press. I'm gonna use a staggered stance to go ahead and maximize my stability as I'm doing this exercise. Notice my hand position is on the inside of the band. From there, we're gonna go ahead and just drop the band straight down onto our hips and we're going into lateral skaters. Make sure that as you're doing this exercise, you're letting your arms flow with your lower body to create both a total body activity and get your trunk more actively involved. From there, we're gonna turn around and we're going into squat rows. Notice my hands are on the inside of the band and the band is looped on my wrist so I can pull my elbows back with my shoulder blades more effectively. Back to full facing away from the band, we're now gonna go ahead and do alternating reverse lunges. This is gonna be a great exercise for balance and control. If you need more support, please use your upper body against the wall to assist with balance as needed. From there, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna finish up with bent over presses. Now I'm gonna go behind the neck or behind the head as I do my presses, but you're welcome to go in front. Just make sure as you press and leave the band come back, you're keeping pressure against the band by pulling apart on it as you complete the movement. Now it's up to you. You got your five exercises, you got your thunder band, you're ready to go. Go ahead and cycle through these five exercises, doing 50 seconds of work and 10 seconds of rest. That's my preference. 
If that's too much for your fitness level, make it a 30 second on, 30 second off. Bottom line is guys, go ahead, set up your long band system, start with these five exercises, and then you'll discover even more exercises you can do with this system. It's a great way to go ahead and create a quick, convenient workout that will not only develop your strength, but your metabolic conditioning. Thanks for joining me today in the band gym, guys. And as always, keep getting better with bands in your band gym. Wives tail alert. That's right. If you're following non-scientific coaches for advice, you're most likely perpetuating the problem. My name is Shawnee Harley. I'm a two-time Olympian and mental toughness coach. I posted a video for athletes about the difference between goals and values. Goals are what we do. Values are who we are. Athletes have a really tough time separating those two things. This is a follow-up video because I have the exact same question for parents and coaches. What are your values? Have you forgotten your why? Why did you sign up to coach in the first place? Why did you sign your child up for this sport in the first place? My guess is the reason that you did it would be a reflection of your values. So my challenge is when you show up, are you showing up with your values? Yelling, screaming, criticizing, hissy fits, lecturing, directing, punishing, arguing. Is that what you value? Sport builds character. It also reveals it. Your character gets revealed every single time you show up. And not only that, your athlete, your child is watching. Time to bring your greatest self. Time to remember your why. It's time to show up with your values. You need some help with that? There's my website. Just get a load of what Coach Chick says about drill design. You know, for almost every drill we coaches use, there is the obvious good, as it's meant to do, plus a not so obvious negative. And, after that, how about things he sees so often, in social media? The problem, is that a hockey player doesn't get to play in a vacuum. No, everything he or she does on the ice, is usually done amid lots of craziness. And, at some levels like, the one the kid above competes at, there are people out there on the ice trying to hurt you. Then, in contrast to what one hockey guru suggests, about his shooting courses. Hockey goals seldom come, off the sticks of players who are standing prettily, in front of a net. No, there are bad guys all around, and, we might be better off practicing shots while being mauled, while on the seat of our pants, while far off balance, on one skate, and so forth. So, do check out this free post, for much, much more on his observations. Hi there, and welcome to another episode of Hockey Nutrition with Kim. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD, and if you have struggled with trying to figure out what to give your skater just before ice time so that they feel energized, this session is going to be for you. Now, something that you want to remember is a pre-skate snack in the 15-minute window is just a top off their tank 
snack. It's not a meal. It should not be heavy at all. Something very easy for your skater's body to digest. So if your skater has had a meal two to three hours just before ice time, they're probably going to need a little snack before they get on the ice. And in this time frame, this 15 minute window, aim for only carbohydrate rich foods. And these snacks contain 15 grams of carbohydrates and 60 calories. Some examples are seven to eight mini rice cakes, one tablespoon of raisins, a half a cup of applesauce or a go-go squeeze tube. So you could use a snack cup or a go-go squeeze tube, whichever is more convenient for your skater. A fruit leather strip. Uh, I encourage you to buy the organic ones that do not have any artificial dyes in them. Seven to eight animal cookies. Now notice these are animal cookies without the frosting. And one fourth of a large bagel. You can see you could easily divide it into four. So what you could actually do with all these snacks is you could help your team prepare for those quick turnaround games so that you always have hockey strong snacks for your skater and the team as well. Now you can create your skater's pre-skate snack bag and you'll always be prepared. Thank you so much for watching this episode and to learn more about youth ice hockey nutrition, visit www.hockeymomrd.com. I'm Kim Lucard, Hockey Mom RD. Happy skating till next time. Greetings from sunny Florida. Okay, this is likely to be the last time we'll talk about specificity for a while. We've covered each of the main offensive skills in logical order, from skating to puck handling to passing and receiving to shooting. And if you want to consider the other half of our game, defense, I'll suggest that it's all about skating agility or about being able to keep up with an enemy attacker. With all that, I'd like to spend a short amount of time on the way specificity affects the way a hockey player should work on condition. Like every other part of our game, I like to compare conditioning to what a player goes through over the course of a typical game. Number one, a skater has to be able to play his fair share of a 60 minute game, or maybe 36 or 45 minutes if he's a youth or high school skater. Of course, there's an aerobic component to this part of the game. At the same time, here's something I'd like you to think about. I've seen far too many hockey players lose their speed by doing too much long distance running. So I prefer to have players simulate the challenges of a long game by enduring rather fast paced practice. Again, please think about this one. Number two, 
we have to consider the pace of a typical game. I mean, in general, three lines and three defense pairs rotate so that a player works for so long and then gets to rest for twice as long. We can simulate that one to two work to rest ratio by drilling both on and off the ice. And while skating is surely closer to the challenge players face in the heat of battle, it's often easier and far more challenging to them in an off ice setting. Lastly comes the typical on ice shift which we'd previously described as being a series of coasts and all-out bursts. Most high-level teams probably skate 30 to 40 second shifts, but challenging players in practice for a solid 20 seconds with a 40 second rest can be quite a workout. Now let me share a concept from my long ago physical education studies. You see, every exercise we do has three components. Duration, intensity, and resistance. At one extreme, picture a marathon runner basically training for a long duration at a moderate intensity and with no resistance. Of course, those conditions are going to lead to mostly a challenge to the runner's aerobic capacity. As for hockey players, they might adjust those components quite differently, going for only a matter of seconds with lots of intensity and maybe even working against various amounts of resistance. Then let me mention one other part of a hockey player's challenge. For during a typical shift, the bursting parts can be quite different. I mean, we're talking about a player maybe wrestling along the boards with an opponent and having to go all out for only a matter of 8 to 12 seconds. Weightlifting can simulate that kind of anaerobics, but so could any other challenge that includes short duration, a really high intensity, and considerable amount of resistance. Yet another part of the hockey player's anaerobic challenge might include some hard skating, that lasting a little longer and probably without resistance, or maybe even with some overspeed assistance. All that said, I think we have to know that conditioning for hockey shouldn't be designed haphazardly or without serious consideration for the sciences. Or should I say, we have to always keep the nature of our game in mind and what a player really faces out in the heat of battle. Do you have an expertise that would help our hockey viewers? If so, how about telling Dennis about that at coachchickhockey at gmail.com. This has been a local video marketing production. We hope you've enjoyed this, and that you've picked up a number of great hockey tips. Please do tell some friends about these shows, and let the contributing coaches know how much you appreciate them.